Hi, welcome to Blue Prism Tutorials. My name is Amir. This is part 13, working with collection stays. In this session, we will learn how to store values in collection stays. In previous sessions, data items we have used so far, acts as a container, have been used to hold single values. But there is also a way to hold multiple pieces of data together. A collection is a type of data item that can hold multiple values arranged like a table with a columns and rows similar to an Excel spreadsheet. If you see on my screen, I am having employee collection properties. If you see in the fields that I am having employee name, employee age, employee salary and the result. Whereas in previous sessions, we have used all this as a data item, single data item. If you see the initial values, I'm going to give it as employee name as Vivekanand, age 70 and employee salary. It has been stored in a row format for each and everything. Let me switch to Blue Prism Virtual Workforce. So I'm on the studio under process. If you see in my, in my previous sessions, we have created multiple practice sessions for calculation stage, multi-cal stage, choice and decision stage. Let me open any one of the practice session. Let me go for the practice for calculation stage. If you see over here, I'm used data items as value A, value B and result, right? So in this session, what we are going to do, we are going to replace all this data items with collection. Okay, let me go ahead and let me drag and drop the collection. Let me go to the properties by double clicking on collection one. If you see over here, I'm just giving the properties as just I'm giving it as collection for variables. Okay, if you see in this session, what we have done, we have given value A, value B, and the result. In the same way, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the fields over here. I'm going to give the field as value A. And the data type, we can give it as a number. And I'm just giving the description as variable A. In the same way, I'm going to add another value or another field. I'm just giving the name as value B. And this is also the number. And I'm just giving the description as variable B. I'm going to add one more thing, add field, that is result. Okay. So I'm going to add it right. That's the reason I'm going to take it as a number and I'm going to say description as result. And now we will go to the initial values. Okay. If you see over here, I just did this, give initialize the variables, but I have to give the initial values to the variables. Okay. I'm going to add the row. If you see the row, what happened? What are the fields that we have in the, you know, in the initialization, we'll get all the variables over here. Okay, as of now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to initial value that I'm going to give it as 200 as given. If you see over here, I'm having the values. What are the values that I'm having? I'm going to give it the same thing over here as of now. Okay, I'm going to give the value as 500. And the result, I'm going to give it as blank. Okay, now let me go ahead and click OK. You can see over here that I'm having the collection for variables, right? And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete all these data items because we are replacing multiple, we have used multiple data items for different, different purpose, right? But now I'm going to use the collection where I can store all the values at a time, correct? Now what I'm going to do, if you see in the add, I'm going to add value A plus value B and I'm going to store the result in store in result, correct? Now, if you see under collections, I'm hang collection for variable. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add these two numbers. How I'm going to add? Just I'm dragging collection, collection variable for value A plus collection value for value B, and then the result is going to be storing in collection variable dot result. So this is, this is a kind of collections that we are going to use it. So we are not using multiple data, item, data items. We are going to use a single collection item to store multiple values. Let me go ahead and let me click OK. Now I'm going to click OK. And let me check for is there any errors. OK, this is the just uh, advice that it is going to be using. There's no errors as of now. 
let me go ahead and let me reset it and let me go ahead and let me run the process so it is going to be starting and add and end if you see over here row one out of one it has been executed how can we see the result where it has been stored now if you go for the initial values you can see 200 and 500 but the going for the current values if you see 200 500 plus 700 let me change the values over here i'm going to give it as 300 okay and the current value it should be we are not going to be changing anything let me go ahead and let me click ok let me reset it let me run once again if you see it has been successfully completed let me go to the collections once again let me go to the current values if you see 300 500 800 i'm not using multiple data items right if you see the initial values i can give multiple values also multiple uh, rows also but whereas i'm not using any for loop or looping concept over here so that what will happen it will it will execute the first records only anyhow let me show you that one also see the current value is 200 i'm going to give it another value value b as 100 and i'm going to click ok now let me run once again by resetting it it has been executed successfully now if you see the current values 300 500 800 the first row itself it has been executed whereas 200 and 100 it's not executed because the we are not using any kind of looping concept over here okay so that we are having looping stays over here in the next session i will show you how to use loop concept thank you for watching this video have a great day